is going to be a quick start guide on how to use the ferro arm without a CAD model. I've already got my piece clamped down. It's fairly secure. Make sure you don't tighten it too much. Um, but your piece needs to be securely strapped down. I'm then going to turn the machine on the back. Once I've done that, it's going to go through a little startup and then it's going to turn, uh, it's going to flash blue. Um, once it's flashing blue, I need to reference all of the encoders. So I need to spin all the different axes on the machine. So there's several points you have to spin. You have to straighten out the arms. And then usually, once you spin it around a little bit, it'll turn solid blue. That means you're ready to make measurements. It has to be blue in order to take a measurement. So if you're trying to reach something to take a measurement and it turns red like this, that just means you need to reposition the arm. So if I push the arm down in this case, I should be able to take a measurement. Now that I have the arm calibrated and everything's ready to go, I'm going to open the CAM2 software. All right, here's the CAM2 software on your desktop. It might be in a different spot than this, but um, it's CAM2 Measure 10 is the full name. So I'm going to open this up. It takes quite a while to open up, so I've already done that. Um, and then I have measurement data from earlier. So now I'm going to start measuring my part. Uh, the first thing I'll do here is hit Control N just to open up a new folder. So now that I have a new document open, I'm going to measure the planes and features on the vice jaw that I want. Uh, I can go to the measure tab and click to measure the planes and then click to measure the cylinders, uh, but I like to use the hotkey. So for a plane, the hotkey is F3, and for a cylinder, the hotkey is F11. So I'm going to start off with F3. It's going to open up. I can start taking measurements. What you all will likely be doing is either measuring the length of a part or measuring the location of a feature like a hole. Um, without using a CAD model, you can't do true position. So this would be for a quick measurement. You can get angles, you can get perpendicularity, you can get flatness. Uh, but in this case, I'm going to measure this top plane right here so you can see me measure it. And then I'm going to go and measure the four sides and a location of this hole. You don't have to measure things that you don't want. So if I didn't care about the width or the length, I could just measure the two edges um, and then measure the cylinder itself and then find the part. Uh, to measure, get this out of the way, there we go. You can use, you take points by pressing the green button here or the green button on the trigger and then the red button is how you end that measurement feature. So if I want to measure this plane, I would press the green button um, to take a few data points. I would pull away and then press the red button. You have to pull away perpendicular to the part that you're measuring. So when I'm measuring this plane over here, I'm going to pull this direction towards the camera, and then I'll press the red button. You want to be about a half inch to one inch away when you pull away. Um, this is called compensating. We have to compensate for the ball on the end, and it doesn't know where the ball is in relation to the part. So move about a half inch to an inch away from the part, and then press the red button to end that measurement and start a new one. It'll just keep going. Um, if you have a plane, it'll keep measuring planes until you switch to another feature. I don't want to bang or abruptly kind of hit this um, ball, this little ceramic ball. It's very delicate. I also don't want to drag this ball along the surface or anything. So I'm going to lightly touch it to the surface, press the green button, take at least seven points for a flat plane and at least 13 for a cylinder. So I'll start taking a few measurements. And then I'm just going to go randomly around the part so I'm never really going to go in straight lines too much. I've got a few measurements. I'm going to pull about a half inch away, press the red button. It's going to pop up and just start measuring for plane two. So now I'm going to measure the rest of these planes, and then we'll jump back in in a second. All right, now that I've measured all the planes all the way around, I'm just going to press F11, and I'll start measuring the cylinder here. You can see it switches over to cylinder one. I'll take a few measurements along the base of the cylinder, a few along the top of the cylinder, and then a few scattered randomly throughout the middle. Now that I've finished with my measurements, I'm going to go ahead and put the arm back. It's going to magnetically kind of stick on here, and then it goes back in this little cup. And now, now I can switch over and work on CAM2 and process the data. Now that I have all of my measurement data, you can see all the planes that I've measured. 
it kind of comes in at kind of a random view. Um, you can use some of the hotkeys, uh, four through zero are different views, um, and you can kind of orient it so this is view zero. I can right, or I can click over here and have the label for the plane pop up, so you can see which plane is which. That sometimes make it pretty easy to, pretty helpful to measure things. What I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to measure the length from, if you hover over it, it'll also show you which one it is. I'll do plane two to plane four. I'll measure the length from plane two to plane four by going to the construct tab, clicking length of features, and then it's got plane four there, and then I'll do plane two. It's a good idea to name those as you go so that you can keep track of what they are. But I can see this is 2.99 inches, so 2.992. Uh, very close to three inches. I can also, if I wanted, find the parallelism between these features. If I go to the Home tab, click GD&T as soon as it saves. There we go. So if I wanted to find the parallelism between these, I go to Include Features, Include All Features, Add Them All, and then I had Plane 2. I'll just go these in order. And then in some cases, you may need to add a datum to the cylinder itself. So here's all of our features. I want to know if the, perpendicular, the parallelism between plane two and plane four, so I can just click on plane four, click parallelism, and it will show me that information down here. This information will carry over when I go to the um, other tab as well. And I will also, I'll do the perpendicularity between plane two and plane three. So I'll click on plane three, and see how perpendicular it is to plane 2, which I know is datum B. I'll click close. You can now click on this, and I can see the perpendicularity of this to plane 2, or datum B. Um, I can also see the length, or the parallelism, sorry, between um, plane 2 and plane 4. Within the Construct tab, I can also find the angle in between some features. So if I wanted to find the angle between 3 and 2, so the angle between 3 and 2 is 89.95 degrees. The perpendicularity between, did I do that correctly? Between 2 and 3, okay. The angle between 2 and 3 is 89.95. The perpendicularity between 2 and 3 is 2,007 inch, almost 3,007 inch. Uh, and now I will find the location of that cylinder. So I'm going to click on Features, and I will say um, Plane 2 to Cylinder 1. Click Create. And then I'll do plane three to cylinder one. And click create. Now if I click on these two, I can see the locational data. So the actual length here is 0.629 or 628. And then 2.365. So that's the look that's the distance from the edge to the center point and the um, long side to the center point. 